Erin, we haven't even talked about this. You literally just <laughs> got back. So right. this, this was a business trip by and large. This was mm -hmm. to promote business and opening up the channels. What is your biggest takeaway? I mean, well, part of the reason that uh, a business was such a big part of this trip for Obama is because, you know, some of, uh, he, as he said, they're not really making a ton of progress on the human rights issues that they have with Cuba, but business is a way for, you know, the U.S. and Cuba to actually start to mend diplomatic ties. And one of the things that uh, White House um, staffer Ben Rhodes said in a press briefing was that if business, or if, if the U.S. drops its embargo with Cuba, which has been going on for 60 years now, um, the Cubans can no longer blame the U.S. for a lot of their economic problems. And so this is a way to kind of start getting in there and then start talking about some of the other disagreements that, that the governments have. One of the interesting things, Bob, that struck me was that it, it, you had all kinds of companies there, but it's the nimble tech startups that are really able to act fast in Cuba, Airbnb, uh, Stripe, as opposed to the larger companies that, you know, it takes a long time to build a hotel chain or a restaurant chain. Uh, Absolutely, sorry. yeah. Um, I'm particularly, inter particularly interested in uh, Airbnb showing up. Um, I think that Cuba has a huge opportunity for uh, the hospitality industry. I recently took a trip to the Florida Keys, and I can only imagine the natural beauty of Cuba. <laughs> okay, yeah. and a lot, a lot more charm and, and history yeah. as well. But Erin, you actually stayed in an Airbnb mm -hmm. did, when you were yeah. there. What was it like? Well, I mean, one thing that's really that's really challenging for American travelers in Cuba is that there really isn't any internet access. It's very, very limited, and in the hotels you can get internet access. There's not, you know, it was a little bit tricky at my Airbnb, but I did have this great experience. I mean, uh, the reason that Airbnb has been so successful in Cuba is because they already had this built-in network of Casas Particulares. Mm -hmm. They've been doing home, uh, home visits and home shares for the last 20 years, and so they were able to just kind of plug into this existing network. So so the host that I stayed with, you know, she, the Airbnb wasn't new to her. She'd been hosting people uh -huh. for a really long time. And uh, they have this real sort of culture of hospitality there. So that was really uh, huh. interesting to experience. What about the culture of entrepreneurism there? Because mm -hmm. in many ways, Airbnb hosts are their own entrepreneurs. They call yes. them in Cuba contrapuestos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is there a, did you feel a cohesive, strong entrepreneurial kind of I mean, that was a huge, network? that was a huge part of Obama. I mean, he had, uh, President Obama had an entire day dedicated to entrepreneurship. And that's not just like tech startups. Uh, that we think of when we hear the word entrepreneur, but this is, you know, restaurant owners and yeah, people who are hosting uh, uh, hosting visitors, um, and that's actually that's actually a really important part of uh, of the president's. Um, message mm -hmm. because um, that's the one way that Cubans, you know, most of them make 20 to $30 uh, a month um, from their, you know, state run government jobs. And this is a way for them to kind of like lift out of that right. and actually, um, you know, bring themselves forward.